Well, hello once again, everyone. Happy Monday to you. Thank you for joining us for this uh, next TBC Connection. And uh, so thankful uh, that uh, you were able, if you were able to, join us for our services yesterday. And if not, they're still uh, on our uh, church Facebook page or our YouTube channel. You're welcome to go back and check those out as well. Trust they're a blessing uh, to you as you watch them and an encouragement. We're getting ready for uh, our service here in our building this coming Sunday. Looking forward to that. We're uh, cleaning and, and arranging things and trying to get it uh, all set. Uh, so we will try to comply with some of the guidelines uh, that just trying to keep us safe and healthy as we possibly can while still coming into the building. And we'll continue to mention that as the week goes on. But looking forward to that and hope you are as well. For the devotional thought for today, I wanted to look back into the Gospel of Matthew. Of course, we've been there uh, for a while now uh, on our Sunday morning services. And of course, we uh, kind of go back and forth and, and do some different things at different times of the year. But uh, one of my favorite things to read as I read uh, through just you know good books, and, and I highly suggest uh, getting a, a lot of good books and reading through them, one of the things I love to do is read through biographies and especially Christian biographies, oftentimes they are of missionaries and uh, just so helpful and encouraging, and the Lord uses uh, those uh, things in the events in their lives that can be a help to us as well. And even God uses those things to convict us at times. And certainly in my life, uh, that has been true with reading the story of David Brainerd. Uh, David Brainerd was a, a young man, a missionary that uh, went out into the uh, populations of Native Americans, American Indians, uh, during the, the colonial times, and uh, wanted, he just had a burden for them. God had burdened his heart for them, and they had never heard the gospel. And so he spent so many times out uh, riding and out in the woods and, and finding new tribes and, and new camps of folks and, and sharing the gospel with them. David Brainerd had tuberculosis and suffered greatly from it throughout his short life. In fact, uh, he died at the age of 29. But David Brainerd kept a journal, and uh, you can find uh, his journal entries uh, in, in, in books, and, and the different uh, folks might quote those things. I believe there's a, a single biography kind of just out of those journal entries. But in one of his journal entries, he mentions um, a storm had come in, and uh, he was stuck in the forest and uh, didn't really want to move, but lightning and things had, had camped around or had come around and, and rain and, and just a tremendous storm. And he wrote in his journal how he had hid in a hollowed out log and the storm continued on and kept raging and, and he had an extended time there and he remembered uh, thinking, boy, what am I going to eat? I'm stuck in this log and the storm is just lasting uh, for hours and hours. What am I going to eventually eat? And so he prayed. Imagine that. He prayed and asked the Lord for his help and his provision. And uh, I'm telling you, just a, a miracle happened. David Brainerd recorded in his journal how just a few minutes after he had prayed, a squirrel had come and left some, uh, some small nuts, maybe some acorns or something, in uh, the same tree where Brainerd had uh, kind of holed up and, and was uh, keeping safe in this hollowed out log. Um, Pastor, do you think that uh, the that God directed that squirrel? <laughs> it seems like he very well could have. I know he can. Uh, he he directed ravens to feed Elijah, and I believe he can he can uh, direct a squirrel uh, to David Brainerd, uh, certainly. And it, when God's people pray, when we act in faith, uh, God then uh, he provides uh, certainly what he knows we have need of. And I'm grateful that God knows what we have need of even before we ask Him. But he still wants to, to hear us. He, he wants us to be acting by faith. So Matthew chapter number 6, then, to get into the Bible portion of it, Matthew 6 and verse number 25 is, again, part of the Sermon on the Mount, and Jesus is giving the teaching about what it means to be a disciple. How do I act now that I'm in the kingdom, in other words? And he says, Matthew 6, verse number 25, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? The obvious answer, yes, yes, we are. Verse 27, Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? 
So in other words, God is telling us, my heavenly, our Heavenly Father knows what we have need of. He does want us, though, to ask in faith or to act in faith according to what we know or believe that he can provide. So you go a few chapters later in Matthew chapter number 13, and Jesus has come back into his own hometown of Nazareth. And the Bible tells us that the people in Nazareth, uh, because they, they had maybe had familiarity with Jesus, they, I really think the issue is they didn't trust uh, in who he was, what, who he claimed to be. But they were challenging who he said he was. They were challenging his deity, and they asked the question, is not the, this the carpenter's son? I mean, he's, we know him. He grew up around here. Why should we put our trust in him? Why do we think he's going to have some, some uh, mighty power? And the Bible says, again, they distrusted him. Uh, they challenged him. And so then the Bible ends that chapter, chapter number 13 of the book of Matthew, just a tragic statement. When it says he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief, could he have done the works? Yes. The question of God's power is not, not uh, at odds here, not, not the question, not the issue. The issue is, do I believe, do we believe in what God can do? And do we trust him then to provide those things? Um, he gives us many opportunities, many ways that he can provide. Uh, he doesn't always have to use a miracle. He can, and at times he does. But oftentimes it's in a more simple means or a more simple way that he uses to do that. And uh, we just need to be acting by faith. And so let's ask him for help to do that then today. Let's uh, act by faith. Let's behave ourselves according to faith and do what it is he'd have us to do. And then be reliant on him, not just in the time of a pandemic or uh, when we're, you know, kind of confined to our homes uh, for the most part. No, I think we can do that, but I'm talking about for all of our life. What are we trusting God for uh, in our life? What are we trusting him for after we get out and after this is kind of passed, and, and I, I believe it will pass, uh, what then? Do we trust him then still, or do we start to rely on self once again and distrust him or, or uh, not even turn to him? Boy, that's, again, that's tragic. So let's ask the Lord for his help uh, in doing that. Again, let's be praying for one another, checking in on one another, uh, taking care of one another to the best uh, or the best that we can. And again, I'm so looking forward to both Wednesday as we've got Brother Stephen Trimble, missionary to Mindanao, uh, going to be preaching for us and presenting. And then Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, our service here uh, on our church campus. Love you, miss you, praying for you. Let's be praying for one another. I hope your Monday is a great uh, day, and then we'll see you again tomorrow.